Hello everyone in here. Thank you for tuning into my LEGO channel. As you might have noticed the past several weeks, ever since I finished, uh, there it is, the three broomstick smock, my uh, content has been a bit varying and I've been trying to focus on other things. And although every two weeks or so I do post content, so pretty much that hasn't changed. Uh, I've tried to branch out, just try and see if there is anything I can do with the Witcher uh, series with Lego. As you might know, well, some of you might not know, The Witcher is really not existent in Lego legally, officially, but I'm really curious to be able to do something with that. So I've been trying to do some figures if possible and some other things. If you've been following me on other social media, you might be seeing that. But uh, today there's something that I really am thrilled to show you and we'll get to that very, very soon regarding The Witcher in Lego. But uh, just before that, as you might see here on the working area, I have uh, detached all the modules from the Harry Potter stuff and I'm basically ready to uh, start working on the texture and making some windows and some other stuff that I've been saying that is uh, basically the next thing that's uh, due to this project. So that's coming very soon. So the Harry Potter stuff is not gone, it's coming. And uh, some very interesting stuff is uh, on the horizon regarding this whole project and continuing it. I continue it further with uh, all the other stuff that has to be built. Uh, one other thing, because I see it over here, the Creo Deville card that I made uh, by instruction from uh, user written on Rebrickable Taco Taco 64, I believe. Uh, you can buy his instructions and he did a really great job. I was uh, kind of worried that the normal red would look a bit weird the car but next to the official minifig it really looks nice and I'm really uh, glad that uh, this model uh, is purchased and I managed to build it. It really looks great and um, yeah I'm not really a fan of building things by instruction too much but sometimes when I see something uh, especially when it's done by a non-official Lego designer and I really like it. It just uh, really deserves the appreciation. So. Yeah, without further ado, let's get into the mocking question and have plenty of stuff to tell you about that. Let's go. So this is my Lego Witcher, well, diorama or whatever you want to call it. Does it qualify to be a diorama? I don't know. It kind of looks like a diorama, but so this is the scene from uh, one of the expansions in the Witcher 3 game, uh, Hearts of Stone, which is a remarkable story. I love playing through, well, the game as an overall, but this, uh, this part of the game is really, really amazing to me and I'm really a big fan. So let's start with the minifigs. Uh, I know that uh, I have made individual short minimock videos how to build these minifigs with all um, real Lego pieces. I know that uh, there are people out there who do amazing things with 3D printing and just uh, have great success recreating the characters from the game or even from the Netflix uh, TV series or whatever. Um, and that's very nice. But for me, if it's not official Lego piece, uh, printed in a Lego factory, it's of no interest to me. Um, for me, really, part of the excitement is to see if it's possible to build something original with the existing pieces that are present in the Lego catalog. Uh, and if you can really do something with that, then it brings a lot of satisfaction to me. If it's not official Lego, then for me, it's not it's not something that deserves well, I wouldn't say my attention because I've seen some of the 3D printed minifigs for The Witcher specifically and, and other series that are not licensed by Lego. And some of them really look very, very nice. I even have a, an alien uh, minifig that was gifted to me uh, that is not original Lego. It looks exactly like from the movie Alien. So let's start with Geralt. So with him, I had maybe, well, the most difficulty and that's because the face initially the face that I found I was convinced that it was a Lego uh, piece 
but it turns out it wasn't. It was this blue-white kind of this mixture between the Thor face and a bit kind of different, but I can't even find the picture right now to show it to you, but it looked really fitting in a way, but it turns out it wasn't, it wasn't a Lego piece and somehow I uh, got deceived that it was. Anyway, uh, after that I searched and I searched and I found this face from the um, Prince of Persia series, I believe this is the bad guy from those Lego sets, really um, is fitting, he has the grin, kind of a bearded face, the eyes, the scowl, maybe even the scars on the face, it feels like it was um, a good fit. Now the only problem here is that this scabbard, I mean that's the only scabbard that really has a possibility for two swords, but the problem is that it's not designed for two swords, it is it's designed for two katanas, so you kind of, kind of need to put a little bit of strain on the swords, which is not ideal, I mean not too much, I mean I can easily remove them even without really doing anything particular, but it, it is a little bit like of a strain and it it does show when you try to put them in um, that uh, they're not supposed to be there. <laughs> it's supposed to be a katana, which is a bit, a tiny little bit um, thinner than a sword. Still, um, it does the job and it is the only viable option right now. Unless you want to have your Witcher with one sword on his back and the other on his hand all the time, but if you can't have a posing Witcher with both swords on the back, then where are you going really? So that was one of the things, and again the scabbard, I mean, I, it, it's in brown here, but uh, it does come in black, and I feel like maybe in black it would be better. Uh, I didn't really want it to blend too much with the old black torso, uh, but the more I look at this, I might think that it might be better just to have it black as well, so I might end up changing that. The biggest difficulty that I encountered here was the hair. You would think that there is so many different hairstyles in white, but actually there aren't. <laughs> uh, at least most of them are female ones, and uh, there aren't really any fitting ones in uh, white that are for a male. Initially, I was in love with this hair here, which is a bit more um, fitting to the Witcher from the Netflix series, right? But then at one point I forgot, well, actually this hair is so long that when you slot it in, it kind of interacts with the swords, you know, like, I can't believe I messed that up. So I, when I realized I was really, really disappointed because I was really um, kind of fond of this. It's actually kind of a rare hair from a minifig. Um, actually on a female but it was looking really nice here and then uh, I was actually thinking about the hair from uh, Cheetah from uh, the DC minifigs and that actually I filmed the little short video where Geralt is uh, imprisoned with this hair this one still hadn't arrived at that time and that hair is really nice if Geralt doesn't have anything on his back <laughs> But yeah, it has the same problem. There is some distance between the torso and the um, end of the hair, but still, if the swords are on his back, it doesn't work. Then I was sure that I had found the right hair with this one. It looks has the ponytail, it has uh, everything else, the way that the for forward piece uh, of the hair is. It really fits like one of the haircuts that you can give Geralt in the games. Unfortunately, this hair doesn't come in white, not even in silvery gray or anything like that. It just doesn't exist. And again, believe it or not, this little ponytail interacts with the swords a tiny little bit. If you force it just a, by a smudge, it does work, but still it's not a gradual slot in. So after some searching and a lot of nerves, I finally found this hair piece, which um, I'm not 100% happy with that, but it's the best one that I found that suits and does the job. And um, I gotta say that 
I will be looking for improving this. And I know some of you will say, well, why don't you just print, like buy one that is printed that looks exactly like the game and it will be a lot better. True, but I will know it's not real Lego and I can't really present something that is not real Lego for me. That's, that's, just, that's just me. It just doesn't work. Um, if you go that route and you can use Chinese counterfeit pieces, uh, repaint uh, manually over pieces and do all sorts of stuff that I just don't agree with. That's the way I am. So pretty happy with this. Um, if you have some suggestions how to improve this, then I will be very interested to hear them. But uh, for the time being, this is the way it is. Probably going to change the color of the scabbard. Other than that, that's the way the current Geralt is going to look like. And yeah, he's fine. Now that I've talked about Geralt for quite a bit, let's talk about the other minifig that I spent quite a bit of time with trying to make. It's gone to Rodim, which is the, well, villain. <laughs> in the Hearts of Stone, one of the greatest villainous characters in video games that I've ever encountered. I've been playing a lot of games ever since, well, the early 90s. So here it was actually a lot easier uh, to do it. Um, there were many options, many routes to go with this minifig. And uh, actually, if you've seen the short um, video of how this is made and where I give the pieces and where you can get them and which uh, numbers they have and etc etc. There is one little change, sorry, uh, one little change and I've added this scarf that I uh, didn't have at that point which um, well not only did I not have it, I didn't know it existed, I found it actually after I recorded that video and wasn't really sure it would be an improvement but it is because he does have this kind of a scarfing on top of, um, of his sh on his shoulders and I feel it looks a lot better. And the problem here wasn't uh, that there weren't options like with Geralt, there were actually many options but all of them were expensive, this torso was very expensive to get and uh, even found a store where it had one and another one with uh, dark tan, I believe the sleeves otherwise it was the same. Uh, and it was like 20 euros or something like that and uh, all other stores had it starting from 30 euros or something it was very expensive these legs are actually from the uh, Disney minifig from Oswald it's very nice because he does have boots and blue pants so very accurate and the face this is like this face is not expensive and it's many sets and there are actually some other faces that look similar but this one has the grin and I feel like it does the job so I'm really happy with this one I actually feel like it's uh, even more accurate than the Geralt um, you're just yeah very happy with how this turned out so with that out of the way let's uh, examine the little diorama that I made this is from the scene at the very beginning of actually of the story where uh, after Going to really freeze Geralt from, uh, well, spoilers <laughs> if you haven't played the game, uh, from the ship. And he says that he would wait for Geralt at the crossroads near the village of Yantra. And this is where uh, this happens at midnight. And I've tried to really recreate it as best as I could. Obviously, uh, had some freedom here and there just because uh, either of, because of part constraints or because uh, I felt it would suit the overall mock. But uh, it really represents the scene where this is happening and where Gontrudin basically sits on this. Actually, not really sure what this is. It's like a sign or uh, there isn't really um, anything on it. Like it doesn't point any direction, but it's just this old house kind of thing. But it's just tilted to the side. And there are two totem poles, one that is represented over here and another kind of uh, that I've made over here. And these pieces here are supposed to be in the form of horses in the game but basically i've just tried to uh, stay true to the shape and over here it's something that's really interesting uh, because i really wanted to make this piece as really as notable and as original as possible and i really was struggling how to make this roof kind of uh, shape according to the every to everything else that was below and it turns out that if you 
use these uh, these hinges over here and kind of stick them together, uh, they would fit right in with with these pieces here. That uh, they just they don't need to be connected. They just slot in perfectly. And even if it's tilted to the side, it looks well perfect. So I'm really proud that I managed to do that. Initially, this whole thing was a bit taller. If you see from here to here. Uh, it's like uh, four bricks tall and it was like another section underneath but then it's too tall because in the games this thing is kind of uh, maybe as tall as Geralt maybe a Geralt and a half or two Geralt's stacked on top of each other something like that more like a Geralt and a half in the games and it already was way too big it was like four minifigs or three and a half minifigs uh, tall so it was a bit mm, it wasn't so great it was just too tall um, still I feel it's a bit too tall than I would like it to be but it's just I can't really make it any smaller without losing its integrity so I feel this is fine initially I had it taller as well because I thought a lot of it will be covered by the grass but once I started placing the grass in the end it turns out that it was fine even without the initial module here that I I removed which means that the, the tree which also needs to correspond with the length and the um, how big this thing is uh, I didn't have to make the tree so big it was bigger before so now it was fine so let's just explore it like over here I mean I really was thinking making something bigger again but it was a, was gonna take a lot longer to do and I still need place to store these things and I want to display them not just do them in a shelf somewhere and hide them away or um, having to even take them apart. I know some uh, creators build something, make some pictures, post whatever, and they just take it apart. And that's just, just so sad for me. I know some people need to do that because the hobby is expensive and they can't really invest a thousand pieces into something and then just have to invest 2,000 more for something else instead of taking it apart and reusing all the pieces. I know how it is, believe me. But for me, if I have to take it apart, I would rather just not not uh, have Lego as a hobby. That's just the way I am. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to make it maybe a little bit bigger, but it's just um, just because in the initial, initial uh, frame that I was trying to replicate, we have two trees basically here and I wanted to maybe show the road extending here because it is a crossroad so there is like a road here and another road here and another road here and another road here or something and uh, add even more vegetation but uh, I didn't really want it to be so much gigantic and this way it actually fits up here on my shelves perfectly so I'll just place it there for the time being one day when I have uh, the whole Hogwarts thing built and placed and there is uh, more things to fill really I will make like a, a road in a forest and I will place this there and there will be actual crossroads and actual whole forest and stuff like that but until that day comes I'll just enjoy this little thing so uh, I just wanted to just really give you a kind of an in-depth detailed look just to see how I've made this try to use different kind of colors really try to use these kind of darker colors mainly other than this bright green everything else is pretty much dark uh, like brown and dark shades of green and more brown here and just because this is supposed to be happening at midnight I really don't want to be having a lot of bright colors and just place different variety here and there and there are actually some hidden animals or not so hidden some of them like a frog a spider over here we have a, like a rat and the owl over here uh, and this tree it's supposed to be a, a willow, I believe, and uh, I've done some research, some people, how exactly do willows, There's some different um, ways to do them, and uh, I saw one that was with the standard pieces here, and then this little seaweed that was used with the, like, flipped 180 degrees down, it looks really nice, but um, I felt that this one was actually a bit more um, honoring the original content. That I was trying to replicate so um, in the end uh, yeah this fence was something else that I was really uh, 
on the fence about huh get it anyway uh this is the piece from the aragog spider set which um i actually found these uh in a bog buy um that i just they sent me the legs i have the set separately but i had another set of legs basically and well, i was trying to figure out whether i should use some kind of tubing for this fence because it's a very peculiar fence if you if you see it in the game and uh, I found that this one kind of really looks a little bit and it's a bit interesting and I was really unsure if I'll be able to use it as a fence because the angles that they go would require for the studs to be in a particular way as you see they're not really in a line they're just really honoring this these shapes and I wanted them to start like zigzagging for example this one here starts from the right and the other one is hinged on the left and then the right again and it really looks better compared to if they would all just uh, be hanging from here so really happy that they uh, that actually turned out to be the way it is um we'll actually be able to buy more of these and make the fence bigger one day when i once i decide to enlarge the mock itself um but yeah these are uh, tan pieces i tried to run away from tan uh every uh chance i get but here actually they work because uh, it is some kind of a bright thing, a colored uh, wood, I suppose. But um, I didn't want to use uh, the same reddish brown as the tree. It was I, I had the pieces to do it, but I just didn't want to go brown again. I wanted the fence to pop out a little bit more. And I even had I bought these things in white, but once I placed them in white, it just didn't look right. Like very clean, very bright. It just didn't didn't suit right with me. So other than that, uh, the other difficult thing was uh, this, this shield, because the uh, pieces underneath, uh, they had to be hidden. And obviously over here on the top, they had to honor this triangular shape, which uh, this shield was very, very nice to uh, sort that problem out. And it turns out that up uh, until a few months ago, this shield didn't actually exist in this color. I believe there are two pieces in the um, two copies of this piece in the Disney villains uh, set, the one that came out a few months ago. Um, so I was very fortunate for that, and I didn't don't have that set. And actually, I think I paid a pretty penny for two um, two pieces of this one. I just used one of them because on the back it's uh, like wooden board like this one I just have one more spare and uh, yeah good thing for that and other than that I believe uh, just the front kind of road I just tried to do some different stuff I'm not completely happy with it but I didn't really want to go with dark tan I know most people use dark tan and uh, maybe a little bit of uh, green here and there for the this kind of a uh, muddy travelers um, road but I really don't want to go that route too much I used most of my uh, dark hand pieces as well so it meant I had to order quite a bit of them and uh, for the time being I feel it's fine this way it kind of represents different kind of stone and cobblestones and moss around stones and stuff like that and I, I feel it's um, it's unhappy with the way it is so other than that, maybe the tree needs to be a little bit taller, like the whole green part needs to be a little bit taller up to up to here ish. But not really sure about that. It's something that's very easily fixable. Just have to look at this a little bit more as uh, time goes on and just find if there is something that bothers me. But overall, really happy with how this turned out. And um, yeah. That's the whole overview pretty much. And here it is, the diorama in its, well, current spot. Um, not really sure if I'm completely happy with the way it is here, but for the time being, it will be. It should be around in a place where I look at it a little bit more and more often. Do I see if there's something that could be improved? As I said, I have some uh, more planned stuff regarding The Witcher in LEGO and see if I'll be able to do this and that. Um, not really sure if I'll be making more minifigs. I know some people ask me, well, you made these two. How about Jennifer? How about Triss? And so on. 
Um, but yeah, we'll see what is possible with the pieces that do exist, but I really don't want to go overboard because there's so many characters in the Witcher that well, could be made. And uh, it was pretty expensive venture, not to mention the time investment and seeing what uh, pieces exist, believe it or not, just to check every single piece of b b uh, white hair that exists and just to see how it looks on many faces. It takes some time, some investigating and some checking and stuff like that. And there's also the uh, money issue because believe it or not, these two minifigs both cost uh, probably more than 50 euros and that's quite a lot for two minifigs, quite a lot. And I'm not really, uh, I would rather spend my funds elsewhere for the time being. So maybe don't really expect more Witcher minifigs in the very near future, but if I see something tomorrow, I might see a peculiar hair that I'll just, just click with something and I'll say, well, this would go really nicely. So I might uh, just make something out of the blue without really planning on it. Um, I actually wasn't planning on doing anything like this until one day I accidentally saw this torso hair and I just clicked that it would look amazingly would go to Odin because it's almost exactly as his torso. But anyway, once again, uh, thank you for watching and I hope that this is of some interest to you. If you want, you could always follow me on uh, all the medias that I'm on, on TikTok, on YouTube. Uh, if you really want to help my channel, subscribe and give me a few likes and comments. That always helps for the algorithm to uh, really feature my channel more out there. And like I said, uh, a, lo a lot more content is coming, both Witcher and Harry Potter and other stuff that uh, is in the works and I'm slowly getting to it. So. If you find this interesting, then I will see you very, very soon. Thank you for watching and stay healthy. Bye for now.